If you can hear that, and the crows are crowing, and the squirrels are squirreling. And today, I'm going to show you a fish that roam with dinosaurs, a fish that will come on land and bite you, and a fish that builds a nest like a bird. Wow. It's a wildlife area, not freaking Sturgis. It's not a motorcycle rally. Wow, Harley Davidson, when you want to convert gasoline into noise. All right, in previous videos, I had mentioned that I was doing keto, and uh, if you look in this clip here, I got muffin top and sad face waist going on. But if you roll back to, I guess, early 2020, uh, late 2019, I was pretty thin. So somewhere in between there, I picked up a few pounds. So I've been doing keto, and here is the result of my effort. So I bought this shirt a little over six months ago, and it fit me like a small, whereas I normally wear a medium. I'm currently about 18 pounds down, so check this out. Look at that, that's solid ribs, no bulge, no sad face waist, no muffin top. So the shirt that I couldn't wear that I got months back that I can now wear, I got this shirt because it says always be yourself, but it also says unless you could be a dinosaur, then always be a dinosaur. But there's a problem with this shirt. Do you notice it? That's a pterosaur. Pterosaurs are not dinosaurs. They are flying reptiles. There's an argument with that, but that's not why I'm starting this video today. I'm here to talk about a fish that's been around since dinosaurs. A uh, fish that's been around 50 million years. I'm here to talk about a prehistoric fish called the bowfin. So here's how things work. I saw a great blue heron and I was waiting to see what he's gonna catch. And I got down in the grass and I was watching him for a good hour waiting to see what he's gonna catch. He just sat there staring at the ground and just as he was about to strike, another great blue heron came in and chased him off. So that was like an hour for this one picture. Then kind of gave up on the hunt and I'm walking along. I look to my left and there's a great blue heron with this giant fish hanging out of his mouth. He speared it right through the side. He was having trouble holding it up because of the size of the fish compared to the size of the muscles in his neck, I guess. So I quickly snapped these few pictures here. I haven't even put them on Instagram yet. I'm probably gonna, I'll post them up when I post this video. So if you wanna see it, go to my Instagram and check there. The fish is called a bowfin. It has been around for like 50 million years, pretty much unchanged. It's in a family called Amidae, Amida. I can't pronounce it. I've only ever read it in books. Of that particular family, there are four members. Three of them are extinct. And some of them have been around since T-Rex and Spinosaurus have roamed the earth in the Cretaceous period. So the only remaining member of that family is this one, the bowfin. After I got this picture, I started to remember that these fish like to spawn in the springtime. And when they've got their little baby fishes, they'll bring them out to the edge and swim around in the sunshine, show them how to eat and collect food and things like that before they go back to their nest. So if I got the great blue heron with one, I think I'm bound to find another one. So I just start walking along and looking in the edges of the water. And after a while, sure enough, I found one. So I set up the selfie stick with the action camera and dunked it in the water just to see how the fish was going to react to it because I didn't want to stress him out. He's got his babies and he was cool with it. So I just kept following him along. Every now and then you'll see him come up to the camera and check it out. He realizes it's not a threat, it's not food, so he moves on. And I would pull the camera out of the water and go back down and he'd think it was something new, check it out and move on. One cool thing about these fish, they can become quite aggressive when they're guarding their babies. There's even records that these fish have come out of the water and tried to attack humans just because they got too close to where the fish was in the water. They'll, they'll swim up on land like a snake, like moving back and forth. They'll swim up on land and they were trying to bite the human, but obviously human's faster on land so he could just take a step back. They've got a mouth full of teeth, which is also unchanged since the days of the dinosaurs. So if you're swimming in the swamps or highly vegetated area where this fish is guarding its babies, there's a chance it's gonna try to bite you. And to think, you were afraid of snakes and sharks. You didn't even know about this guy. Besides being aggressive, the male bowfin is quite the homemaker. He, can, he will build a very elaborate nest. He'll hollow out a hole in the mud or the bottom of the water, or he'll bite chunks out of plants, building like a little cave through the plants. And then he'll take these chunks and line this hole with them, building a nest for the little fish so that the female could come in and drop the eggs. They'll even uproot plants by getting near them and just fanning their tail until all the soils moved away from the plant and the plant just falls over and it's this nest that they build is how they attract the female. The eggs take about 10 days to hatch and about 10 more days after that the fish are swimming along as you can see here in the video. And another cool feature about this fish is their dorsal fin. The It's that particular dorsal fin why this fish is called the bow fin. If you watch it in the video it's almost hypnotic the way it moves 
This fin will allow this fish to swim backwards and forwards. This is effective when it's hunting prey or sneaking up through the muck and the swamps. This fish is an ambush predator and it will eat anything that it can fit in its mouth from worms to small rodents that are getting a drink of water. It'll come out and grab them. In less than one second, it can go from jaws closed to grabbing its prey and jaws closed again in less than one second. This fish will also extend its lower jaw just like the smallmouth bass or largemouth bass. The sense of smell on this fish is better than its eyesight and those two little things poking out of its nostrils allow it to find prey in murky water that you can't really see through or, or at night in the dark. They prefer extremely vegetated habitats and if you look at the nice green color on these fish, they blend in extremely well. Both male and female fishes have a black spot near their tail. The males have a gold ring around this spot and the uh, females have more of a washed out colored, just a black spot without the gold ring. And th there's a theory that the black spot is what the baby fish used to home in and follow the male. But if you look at my video here, the male's kind of following the babies. The male is the only one that protects the eggs and the babies. Notice the bony arm plated head on this fish. This is why it's called a living fossil. Because it looks like a living fossil. These fish can survive really high temperatures or areas of water where there's almost no oxygen. Uh, like levels of oxygen so low that it kills other fish. These guys thrive. Where other fish have to use their gills to get oxygen from the water. A bowfin can survive in extremely low oxygen water. Because it will come up to the surface and it will take a big gulp of air. And it will hold that gulp of air in its... Uh, lungs, well, air bladder, and it'll stay underwater until the oxygen in that gulp of air is used up. Then it'll release that gulp of air, come to the surface, take another one, and go back down. This is also the reason why this fish can come on land and try to bite you. So I went on uh, Facebook groups and I found a couple of local fishing forums, uh, message board things where people talk about going fishing, and I asked about the bowfin. Well, I'm getting swarmed by a bee, go away. So I asked about the bowfin on there and cooking it, eating it, catching it, what people think and I didn't find one person that said they like to eat it. A lot of people and some things I've read said that if you don't cook the fish within 30 minutes, it turns into jelly. The meat will turn into jelly, like jello-like uh, substance. And then some people said that even after you cook it and you put it in the fridge overnight, the next morning the meat's gonna turn back to the, like this jello-like substance again. Which is pretty weird because I also read that the Native Americans, the Indians that we wiped out, uh, used to love this fish. It was one of the things they ate quite often. So I'm curious to know how the Native Americans prepared this fish in a way that it was edible, or maybe they just like jello fish. And while nobody likes to eat this fish in particular, I've read that in Louisiana, Cajun caviar is bowfin eggs. I've never had it, I recently read about it, not that curious to try it. So there's probably more information than you ever wanted to know about a fish called a bowfin. I highly respect this fish, I love finding this fish, and I hope that you'll get to see one too someday. Do not kill it. It is not an invasive species. Like I said, it has been around for millions of years. And I hope this video encourages you to go outside and explore your local wildlife. Hey, join your friends. He's almost sat on his bench. Thinks crawling with caterpillars. Uh, one thing I learned is you never touch the fuzzy ones. Going back to those pictures I got of the great blue heron with the bowfin. Um, I didn't really talk too much about it in the beginning of the video. I want to elaborate a little bit on it more now that you are familiar with that fish. So. I just happened to walk up on this and seen him pull it out of the water, so I started firing my pictures. This fish was so big he could not pick it up out of the water without it pulling his neck down. There's no way he could have flown with it. So the way he got it down his throat is that he would stand the fish up long ways with his tail on the ground and then try to force his throat over the fish, like going straight down like this, trying to force his throat over the fish and force the fish down his throat, kind of like the way a snake would swallow something. And after three unsuccessful attempts, he finally got it down enough that he could pick up his head and slide the fish the rest of the way down. And he must have sat there for another 30 minutes after he did, because I highly doubt he was gonna he was not gonna be able to fly until he until he pooped some of that fish out. Something else to think about. He caught this bowfin at the edge of the water. What did I just show you? A bowfin at the edge of the water. Well, hello, Mr. Snake. And goodbye, Mr. Snake. Ribbon snake. Uh, so he caught this fish on the edge of the water. So I showed you video from the same day of a bowfin protecting its young. Look at the tail of the one he's swallowing. Look at that spot. He got a male. There's a high probability that that male was protecting a whole bunch of little babies and now those babies are left to fend for themselves. I guarantee you within a couple days frogs, other fish, 
and other things that are predators to those little fish are going to eat them all. And that's the cycle of life in nature. You either grow up to be a fish that goes on land and bites man, or you end up in a frog's belly. I have a question for you. So the bowfin has survived prehistoric times, has been around since dinosaurs. This is the last remaining member in its family. The others have gone extinct. It has survived this long. Do you think it can survive humans?